Jamie Moore, you're very welcome to Leopardstown and to RTE Racing. Good to see you here, Jamie. Yeah, it's great to be here. Yeah, it's a great weekend. Uh, Brits thin on the ground today, just three English train runners on the card, but in Nocna Noose, arguably the most interesting of them. How's his preparation been? Yeah, touch wood, his preparation has gone well. Um, he had a mishap his first time out this season, but uh, since then he's won a couple and finished second to Mr. Dino at Plumpton. Um, but he, he ran a great race. He was probably fifteen pound wrong at the weights that day. He's a bit wrong at the weights today, but um, he's in good form. He's a he's a good horse, and it's just another level again today. It is another level, and yet it's something of an expression of confidence that you would choose not to go to Warwick next Saturday, but come all the way here to Leopardstown for this valuable prize. You must be to a degree confident. Yeah, we we know we've got a, a very nice horse on our hands. Um, the Kingmaker, that wouldn't have been a walkover, but it probably would have suited us a little bit better in, in that respect. But um, we thought it's it's a big weekend. The owners, they, they, they like their rugby as well, and it all coincided to work together. So um, that, that's why always, at the end of the day, if you're going to own horses, you want to enjoy them, and this, this is what they want to be doing. Um, your father, Gary, is a vastly experienced trainer under both codes. Uh, his quotes in the build-up to the race suggesting that the travel could be a question mark for this young horse, Nogna Noose. How's he taken the journey? He's taken the journey brilliantly. Um, Haley travelled him over. I rode him out yesterday morning, gave him a cant, and then he, he hopped on the the horse box in and and then the boat at Hollyhead. And then Haley, she sat on him this morning. He ate up his uh, breakfast, his dinner last night, ate his breakfast this morning, had a roll, had a little cant. I get everything's gone as as good as it possibly can. And very final thing, usually we see him from the front, lickety split. Same tactics today. Yeah, we, we're not going to change it. Um, he's a horse, he just likes to get on with it. Um, he goes fast, and I have tried holding him up a couple of times, and it just doesn't suit him. Um, so, yeah, we're just going to let him do his own thing. Jamie Moore, great to see you here in Leopardstown. Very best of luck in the Irish Arkle. Yeah, presentation for connections of Min, Rich Ritchie, Susanna Ritchie, Billy Mullins joined them on stage as well, and Nicola McGeady from Labrooks who presents the trophy for the Ladbrokes Dublin Chase Ruby up there as well. All smiles, job done, and on to the next we go. Got a jostling for position there. Tom and Jamie Moore, as you just heard, uh, Jamie being interviewed there, everyone having a bit of fun. I said a few wannabe jockeys there, Katie, in the, there in the stands. I might have had a few points as well today, when it looks like things. I'd say, I'd, I'd say just a couple. I have to give them a, a, another couple of hours. I'd say they'll be in some form. Yeah, absolutely. So, not the news is going to take on a Larisberg in the next race. And I'm a huge fan of Larisberg after what he did over Christmas. I, I think he could be the Arkle horse for me. I'd love to see him go and step it up today and follow it up there, Ted. Yeah, I think Larisberg's a smashing horse. He's a great looking horse, jumps well, loves the good ground, uh, I think he's a very good horse, I think he could be an Arkle horse as well I think he should beat these here, that horse of uh, the Jimmy Moore talk about, Nakanus he goes a real good gallop, uh, that was around Huntington, the French horse picked him up and beat him, but he was a hell of a horse, he got injured since, but he goes a real good gallop but uh, Hunting, that is a tight track now that he won on, okay. uh, this is more more of a galloping track. He'll bring him a good gallop, but I think it'll suit uh, Larisberg, and I think he'll beat him. Okay. Is there support for Larisberg in the market? Brian? Yes. Five to four favourite Larisberg. Weighted 140 over hurdles already a stone higher over fences, and you feel that he's still climbing the ladder. This is a son of Network trained beautifully by Joseph O'Brien, and he's going to be the horse to beat. And the Frank Ward solicitors are and of course a race steeped in history here at Leopardstown and sponsored for the tenth time by Frank Ward solicitors of course great supporters of racing huge prize look at it 125,000 euros won last year by a foot pad we have two pretty late enough absentees Articulum is out so too Paloma Blue leaving a field now of only six going to post number two Juca de Tay is the mount of Davy Russell three not in the news he's nine years of age of course he won his point to point down and killer and he's Cork for uh, Michael Winters won his bumper for Michael before being sold the beneficial he liked the ground and he will be in front it'll be a case of the Moors hoping for goodbye starter hello judge but Mark Walsh will have him in his sights on Larisburg for Joseph O'Brien five Mengli Khan Jack Kennedy the son of Luke de Vega Gordon Elliott will trade him six is an, is an absentee seven us and them ran very well last time stable companion of the favourite JJ Slevin will ride and number eight Voix du Rev Paul Townend riding for Andrea and Graham Wiley six going to post for the Frank Ward solicitor's Arkel five to four Larishburg yeah will he be a fourth winning favourite from six races here at Leopardstown the market says so 
uh, 11 to 8 on the exchanges, 5 to 4, and that's a rock solid price, Brian. 3 from 4 over fences this season. Only Delta Works managed to beat him. That was over further. As Hugh just mentioned, that really fantastic performance here at Christmas time. So he likes the track, he likes the trip, he'll enjoy this ground. And of course, he's trained by a master already. I think that's an applicable comment, uh, despite the young, the, uh, young age of Joseph O'Brien, his trainer. Uh, chief opposition, at least where the market is concerned, is the Fakenham, the Newbury winner. Second at Plumpton to Master Dino, knock the noose for Jamie Moore. As you said, one thing we can guarantee, he'll be in front over the first fence. I'll be surprised if it's different from that. He likes to go off 100 miles an hour and try and string him out. Unfortunately, the running style of La Richebourg probably means that will set it up very nicely for him. But as we've seen so many times, particularly over Christmas, uh, that's not automatic. It would be easy otherwise. Uh, Hugh would be on the way to the payout queue already. So he'll have to do a bit of sweating just yet. But La Richebourg's strong. Uh, drifting is not Nanus, strangely. Uh, seven to two the price here in the ring, not Nanus. He was three to one prior to the withdrawal of Paloma Blue. So that explains the, the drift there. Uh, Mengli Khan something in the region of 6-7 to 1 uh, Voidu Rev the same and then double figure prices Duke and Atai and us and them but on a day for the punters it's all about this La Richebourg 5-4 to four the price fascinating Tom Joe behind him and our cameraman Joe if you'll follow you see Pat O'Hare 5-4 to four. Pat O'Hare has two boards here in the race 5-4 to 6-5 Ray Mulvaney Ladbrokes going 11-10 to 10. La Richebourg now 4-1 to one. knock the noose yeah, look, I mean, La Richburg has his ground. He wants it He wants it good. He has that on the chase track today. I mean, his hurdles form is one thing, but he's, he seems a different animal over a fence. And the way he jumped getting through those fences the last day, Ted, it was very, very impressive. Yeah, he's a very super leper. He's always catch your eye. And it's a huge plus when a horse can jump as quick as that, isn't it, Katie? You know, ah, most of the air quick. Yeah, he was brilliant. He gets from A to B. He's absolutely super. He's as quick in the air, which is... Uh, which is what it's all all about. He was brilliant here here the last day, and the good gallop too today is going to suit him. Um, it's going to suit Vidarev actually as well. That he was a bit keen here the last day, but um, I think uh, the fact that the English horse is, is going to make the run, and there'll be no hanging around anyway. Us and them reimposes Vidarev reimposes Mengli Khan. I mean, was a big fan of as a novice herder, Ted, a big scopey type. He was always going to be a chaser, but he was disappointed that day after winning very. Presley, one of the chase yeah, he stepped up a grade. It's like anybody else. We're all great when we're beating horses that are worse than us. And he was very good at punches down. But he stepped up here behind them horses. He was just found Montan. He still ran a cracking good race. And uh, uh, Gordon's other horse, uh, uh, Duke of the Tay, Duke he's gone yeah. from being an ordinary horse to a 151 horse. He's won two valuable 100,000 pound handicaps at Ferrios. And done a, he was, he'd done it well the last day as well, too. He's loads of experience. I think he could be second uh, to uh, the Richburg. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but it's a competitive race. I mean, like whatever we've been last time out I mean you can make a case for four or five horses to win this race Katie yeah, absolutely for, for, from the top as far down as the bottom um, you know I mean you can make a case for I'm like, well, and us and them is a massive prize as well he was second here here the last day and I think he's meant to be the outsider uh, with the, the, the betting as well but um, yeah it's 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 a very competitive race and the fact they're going to go a good um, gallop as well I think um, it'll suit last fence stop to be fair I know now it's gone because of the sun and everything else but it just takes a bit of the like when you jump the second last it's a long drama. run it takes a bit of drama oh the, the lads say them last fence might be back oh yeah it's oh, not it's up yeah. it's in the shade it's in the, the shade. shade you can see it yeah Right. Yeah. We all good. is forgiven. The best all of both worlds. We're in the sunshine and they can jump in the shade so the last fence yeah. is there. There yeah, we go. Good. We'll get a proper good. two yeah. mile chase there. Let's go to Tracy Piggott. Yeah, thank you very much, Hugh. I've just caught up with Joseph uh, O'Brien. Of course, he's two runners in this, but all eyes are going to be on the Richburg, of course, the Arkle Chase winner. And uh, he looks a picture. You're, you're telling me there, Joseph, everything's gone well since his great win here before over the same course and distance? Yeah, everything has gone well, Tracy. Um, he's in good form. Uh, he should like to put a nice ground and uh, yeah, hoping for a good run. He's a lovely horse. He just seems to be progressing all the time. You're, you're happy with all the everything that's gone gone yeah. on? Yeah, absolutely. He's taken very well to chasing, um, um, obviously, as you've seen. And uh, um, so hopefully it looks like there'll be a good pace on uh, uh, the English horse goes a good gallop. So, uh, um, yeah, we'll see what happens. He really does seem to love his jumping, doesn't he? And that's, that's a big help. That's what, yeah, he, he, he seems to jump very well. Um, um, and uh, listen, it's obviously novices. You have to always be careful because because they they are they are only novices. So, uh, uh, but but um, hopefully hopefully he puts in a good round of jumping and uh, and uh, he gives him his air about going to the last. And we'll see what happens after that. Really looking forward to seeing him. Best of luck. Thanks, Tracy. Thank you. Thank you. So there we go. 
That is Luis Burt for Joseph O'Brien. Mark Walsh, who was second on Rhinestown, then had the winner and off you go. He's looking to make it a double here. Six to five, favourite now. Luis Burt, so impressive, as we said, over Christmas. Uh, getting touched off over a further trip by Delta Work at Ferry House, the previous run for that. But two miles, we now know, is his best trip, and he is the one to beat. Next horse is the English Raider, knocking ass. He's a former pointer pointer, runs with his heart on his sleeve, and he won't be hanging around here. First five is Megley Can, good novice hurler last year, won well at Punchestown, put in his place here the last day, but uh, well entitled to take his shot. Uh, just to let you know, the second last fence is out, uh, the last fence is in, but the second last fence is out. Okay, so a long run between the third last and the last then, if you like. Uh, eight is Wadarev for Willie and Paul Townend, well fancied here at Christmas, but had to settle for third place behind Joseph's two, who reposes here, with the horses improving though, so it's Rule this fellow out five things to find on the reach part from that Christmas run. Horse two is Duke. Duke. And his last two, two. Starts, yeah. Starts. Davy Russell takes the right um, again to, to the day. This is another step up. And horse number seven is us and them as well. Joseph's second horse in the race. JJ Seven on board. Had that brilliant win last weekend. That try and further trial. A decent second to Larishberg over Christmas. And just under five lengths on the favourite going on that run. It's time. Runners are just walking by us here, and as you can see, there's a wall of them across the track. Right in front of you is Jamie Moore, Jamie Muir, Moore on Knock a Noose. Uh, he said in an interview previously that he's going to just drop his hands and bowl and leave it go, and that is Jamie's style of riding. When he does leave one off, he drops the hands and lets it go. Luckily, uh, or enjoyably, the last fence is back in, which is also the first fence here. So these are going to go like the proverbial off a shovel down to it. Um, there's the whole field like to be ridden handily. Davy Russell looks like the only one who's intent on dropping in on Duca de Tay. He's a horse who's normally ridden handily himself, but he came down to the start extremely, extremely keen with Davy. Davy had a tough time pulling him up, so I think he'll be happy to try and settle and drop him in a little bit. But as I said, they're going to go extremely fast. Knock a noose, the likely front runner, but plenty others in it who like to line up handy. Larishberg near him there. Larishberg probably one who'll drop in third or fourth as well. Mengli Khan has made the running. Paloma Blue has made the running. Us and them has been ridden handily. And Vodorev is a regular front runner. So this is what you love about good two mile chasing. It's novices giving it a gun a real good gallop. This will be a real test of jumping. So any frailties will most definitely be found out. And as we can see, the most likely front runners, Jamie Moore and Ruby Walsh beside him. Yeah, this is going to be a cracker, I think, even with the, the non-runners as well. I mean, you look at the hurdle rating, Reesberg 140 over hurdles, Mengley Camp was 150, um, but, you know, on the basis of their form over fences now, you can flip that on its head, it's amazing, you go back to the footpad and Petit Mouchoir as well, Petit Mouchoir got the better over hurdles, you flip it on its head when they go over fences, it's a funny old game. Yeah, it's a huge difference, Katie, isn't it, between the fences and the hurdles, you know? Oh, yeah, massive, it's a big difference as well from the flat to the hurdles as well, you know, it's the yeah. same... It's, it's the exact same some horses aren't like that's why you'd say like there'd be some horses who'd be a massive mark o to over fences they'd be half the mark over hurdles but they still can't win a hurdle race Tony O'Hare off and running in the Frank Ward solicitor's Arkle and heading towards the first fence they're jumping at this time but they're not jumping what would normally be the second last in this race uh, Vodorev in the lead with Knock the Noose they're over to, ahead of us and them in third and then towards the outside Mengli Khan followed by Larish Berg in the McManus colours. He's the favourite. And Duca de Tay is the back marker as they come past the winning post. Full circuit ahead of them. Vada Rev, the leader, by less than half a length to the English challenger, Knock the Noose in second. They're followed in third place by us and them. And then comes Mengli Khan. Larish Berg is next. And behind Larish Berg is Duca de Tay. Coming now to fence number two. Vada Rev and Paul Townend in the lead. Knock the Noose on the right. Jamie Moore in second and he's gone Knock the Noose is gone Knock the Noose down at the second fence horse and rider quickly up as they come now to the third and Wadarev is the leader followed by us and them in second they're followed over it by Mengli Khan and then Larishberg and behind Larishberg is Duca de Tay as they go up towards the turn taking them into the back straight and onwards towards fence number four Wadarev on the inside of 
us and them. There's Jamie Moore, none the worse for his tumble. Third place is Mengli Khan and for La Richburg, and bringing up the rear is Duga de Tay as they come to the first of the fences down the far side. Wadarev in the lead. Over, followed by us and them in second. Mengli Khan on the outside of La Richburg, and two lengths behind them, Duga de Tay as they go down towards the second fence on the far side of the course. Another plain one, Wadarev the leader by just over a length. Followed by us and them in second, mainly Canada length and a half back, half a length to Larich Berger, length and a half to Duke de Tay, Waterev over in front. Followed by us and them in second, Larich Berger's next towards the inside. As they race on towards the first of the two open ditches, Waterev in the lead. He's on the right of the picture as we look at them. Runs across it a bit, but leads us and them. Larich Berger, the favourite, is in third place being followed by Mengli Khan with the white cap on the left of the picture and Duga de Tay in the Jiggenstown's first colours. He's the back marker. Rodarev, the leader, again, jumps a bit to the right there but leads from us and them in second as they race down towards the next uh, fence now and it's Rodarev and us and them from the Richburg. Mengli Khan on the outside and Duga de Tay tightly grouped the five of them as they head down towards the open ditch at the end of the back straight. This will be the second last as they're not jumping the normal two out. And uh, Vodarev from us and them. They're followed on the inside by Larichberg as they race down now inside the last half mile. A long run to the final fence. And Vodarev, the leader from us and them in second place. Larichberg is close in third. Duca de Tay next. Mainly can just been ridden along and not making much impression, bypassing what's usually the second last. And it's Vaudarev, the leader, followed in second place by us and them. Le Richburg just behind them, Duca de Tay next, and then a break to Mengli Khan as they turn to face the final fence. Vaudarev has made all the running, pressed by us and them in second. Le Richburg just behind them towards the inside, and then comes Duca de Tay as they come to the final fence. It's Vaudarev with Le Richburg coming there on the inside. And then us and them, and, and uh, Vodarev's a faller. And uh, Hamper to the Tay, and it's Larichberg who leads. Larichberg out in front from us and them. It's David Companion in second, and racing up towards the line. Larichberg going to follow up his Christmas win over the same course. Goes away, wins it well. Larichberg, the winner, under Mark Walsh from us and them second, and Mengli Khan third, ahead of the only other finisher, Duke de Tay. Well, Ted Walsh, your thoughts? That one as I just take a deep breath here. <laughs> Are we going for dinner? <laughs> you buy new. You did four times, did you? Well done. That was fantastic. That was great. It was great for you too. Your, 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 your bet is up on the whole lot. You're in the clover. No, that doesn't matter. No, seriously, I mean, like, you know, if this horse is going to go on and win an article, he had to go and win that race today. Uh, he did it well too. Paul was full of confidence on him. He moved up, or not Paul, I said Mark was full of confidence on him. He moved up on the inside of Paul Town and going to the last and jumped it well. He was always in chicken. Watch this horse fall here now. This this is the horse falling here. Uh, watch him. Not he's always, yeah. he's running kind of half. For a few moments there, Jamie just followed the rail around. He moves back in again. But he's always, like, he was mad free when he ran at Plumpton. Yeah. Uh, but he's just going, he's free here, but he's going faster than he wants to be going. Can't make up his mind, catches the fence, gets it up high. Wow. What a mother and father of all he gives himself and poor Jamie. Lucky there was no contact, but that's what you call a mother and father of one now. And Happy the boy's got a rot in the last. Uh, Paul Townland got a rotten one at the last as well, too, uh, off of uh, Voidarev. Voidarev ran super, jumped like a buck, uh, but uh, at the last, Last year, Le Richburg had him well and truly beat, but uh, he took a rotten fall, Katie, didn't he? He did, he did. He, uh, all he, is okay. He uh, he took a horrible fall. This was, this was a, it was a lovely race to watch. I mean, Mark Walsh gave this horse an absolute peach. If if you look at the head on down, to down the back, Rev is jumping right every step yeah. of the way. Mark knows the further he goes, the more right he is going to go. He's going to get, get up his inside. That's why he, he was travelling so well. He was able to track him round into, into the straight and then have a pop up the inside then the gap game Vyderev obviously fell but I mean he was jumping right he knew he was he was going to get there but he's riding out, out of his skin he's riding with loads of confidence and when you're travelling you can make those types of decisions as well this is what the Rev's fall was Paul yeah. got a nasty uh, fall he did he yeah but well, the ground was quick he, was he got slapped and he's with Mark Mark Walsh. two timer let's go yeah I'm with Mark Walsh here he's brimming from ear to ear Mark this is an absolutely beautiful horse 
Oh, he's brilliant. Uh, he's a different horse over fences. He just travels and jumps so quick. You can you can do what you want to him. He's very good. And, uh, as two mile novice chases, as two mile novice chases go, that was about as seamless as it could possibly be. Yeah, they went to right gallop. Even when uh, Gary Moore's horse fell, we still went to go gallop. Paul brought us along nicely the whole way. But to say he just jumps so so well. He's he's doing everything so easy and a good strong run too. Just suits him down to the ground because he stays well. You could place him absolutely anywhere you wanted, but you must have always been very confident. I was down the back. I was I was very happy. I could see. Jack Kennedy wasn't travelling that well and I knew Davey was behind me I didn't know how well he was going but I had the two lads in front of me covered anyway Very good, well done Mark Thanks Andy, thank you Coming to us now Yes, we're just uh, getting out of the shadows here and uh, I've caught up with Joseph you must be pleased with that uh, he was good, wasn't he? Yeah, over the moon, Tracy um, uh, it was a, it was a, went very quick um, uh, A lot jumped, of drama Yeah, there was a lot of drama I suppose novices like we said before but uh, he jumped well on the hole and he was clever when he had to be Mark was very very uh, 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 brave on him he waited and, and when he got to Gap he was it was good so over the moon, Tracy yeah, I'd say he'd have learnt a lot from that too you know, with everything going on Yeah, for sure Sure, and uh, obviously the other horse on a cracker too. Um, yes, uh, really good. Um, yeah, so he jumped well again, and uh, yeah, delighted, Tracy. Yeah, so all roads lead to Chelm. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> well done. Welcome, and then well you. done, Joseph. Thank you. Yeah, Joseph, it's great to see him, dude. Look, I mean, there's Paul. He's back on his feet there, which is good to see. We know that Andy Lynch has been brought to hospital as well. He had an arm injury. Look, the ground is good. The falls are going to be that bit more punishing, Katie, I imagine. Yeah, they are. I mean, when the ground is quicker, that's why some of the lads get awful injuries during the summer as well, you know, because just when the ground is hard, I mean, there's just no escaping from it. Yeah. It's like open up the car door and find yourself out on the M50 going 40 miles an hour I mean that's the reality of it. at least when the ground's a bit softer it's just softer and you slide more you know when it's quick it's um, it isn't nice but they, they, they're as hard as nails these lads you know and uh, to take the falls that they take they're a testament oh. to 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 the game there's nothing soft about it, any of them that I can guarantee you and they're not giving out about the cold anyway No they certainly are not and look I mean this horse goes on to to Cheltenham now a fantastic ride by Marcus as you said and he, he never panicked at any stage there's always there was drama and the whole lot he just kept to his task got the inside there and he just flew away from him. yeah as Kelly said he was reading the race well uh, while the rev was jumping to his right he was always going to get a good passage there he jumped well he's a beautiful jumper this horse and Delta Work who beat him at Fairy House I think he's a hell of a horse you might see him tomorrow uh, yeah. here as well too they're two really good novices this fella at two miles the other fella and that beyond two and a half or three miles two smashing horses two very strong uh, contenders for Cheltenham yeah and it's, it's been a favourite day as well which you know it's no yeah. bad thing the people who are awarded there today obviously Apples J did the business as well we mentioned Commander of Fleet the Reesburg as well and Min so you know the bookies are in a few pounds it makes the day even better as and, as yeah, and you even got yourself a few pound you <laughs> <laughs> I have to buy you lobster now for dinner this evening we're going to watch the match but look it's delighted for connections as well and JP McManus those famous golden green silks the white cap obviously will always in the first choice wasn't them again ran well to be second here is the, the bleeding line Ted yeah he's probably a network uh, horse that stands in, in, in France uh, he's also the sire of Sprinter Sacre he's got a lot of good uh, uh, fast horses the great leopards Sprinter Sacre was as good as ever you saw a monsoon horse uh, out of a phantom breeze mare uh, that used to be owned by the Firestones I think Dermot well might have trained the phantom breeze I'm not a, uh, a great pedigree buff here you want Robert for that but uh, I, kinda, I know enough of it just to go back on, on what I mentioned about the hurdles so Mengley Camp 150 over hurdles and Arishbrook 140 but they flip it on its head like Footpad did with yeah. uh, with Paddy Mouchoir uh, as well. I mean, why why does why doesn't the hurdle form always translate into defences? Well, the reason is that every horse will jump yeah. but some horses actually love it and when you get inside the wing they clap their eye on the fence like Larishburg and they up again they love it now horses jump because it's natural from the jump but some of them are careful and they just drop back a bit and if they do that at every fence you can find them coming back underneath you but the horses that love it the same way the horses that come off the flat that love jumping hurdles the minute they get inside the wing you can find them underneath you picking up racing down to it not racing down to it, it not backing off it yeah. can't That's wait to get there can't wait to get there and the other fella can't wait to get away from it and there's a big difference between a hurdle and a fence do you know what I mean there's a lot of horses will jump hurdles that just went off it thousand stars okay. hurdles all day long yeah. fences absolutely no chance not if he kisses ass we jump yeah so I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's a bravery thing it's a mindset thing as much as anything else yeah but, but he was a super lap ro- over hurdles yeah, absolutely brilliant. fantastic but uh, fences no chance ok Brian take it away oh this is a proper horse Beautifully bred by Network Cross the Sire of Sprint to Sacra, closely related to uh, Chevry Chambertine and also of course the Dama half sister to uh, New Alco, of course, who won the uh, Scottish 
uh, Grand National. So he's got the speed for two miles, but it wouldn't be the biggest surprise in the world if uh, next year or the year after he could develop into a Gold Cup horse. He's got everything, this horse. Sky is the limit, and it's onwards and upwards to Cheltenham, and he's a real star on the making for Joseph O'Brien and J.P. McManus. What a day J.P.'s had, of course, won the two big races at Sandown, with Deffy Desai, the great one over there, the Sissy Isles, and of course, and Bouvardier had his uh, stroll in the sun in preparation for the champion hurdle as well. Off you go, winning the big Ladbroke hurdle here for J.P. And Charles Barnes for the second consecutive year. La Richburg wins with consummate ease the Frank Ward Solicitor's Arkle by seven lengths, the 11 to 10 favourite from the stable companion Us and Dem at 11 to 1 in second and third number 5 Mingley Can at 5 to 1 remember kicking King being placed in the Arkle en route to winning a gold cup this horse has got everything a great trainer as well La Richburg 11 to 10 favourite what about tomorrow the Unibet Irish gold cup of course the big one tomorrow here at uh, Leperstown and what a field we've assembled road to respect is your uh, Overnight favourite at 5-2, to two, Bells Hill, Willie Mullins. You could detect the uh, confidence about Bells Hill. Ran a blinder here at Christmas. 11-4, to four, Stable Companion Album, 4-4-1. Four to, four to one. Mona Lee for Henry de Bromwell is 6-1, to one, and it's 12-1 to one bar. That's tomorrow at 3.35, the Unibet Irish Gold Cup, live on RT. Thank you very much indeed, Brian Gleeson. Yeah, let's talk about that Unibet Gold Cup before we leave you tomorrow. I'm a huge fan of Road to Respect, Katie. He got zero luck here over Christmas and still managed to finish in the prize money. Yeah, absolutely zero luck. Yeah. I mean, he just, and he slipped leaving the back and it was a mess of a race and they didn't go a gallop and they usually do and I that's not going to happen tomorrow. I mean, he, Ken Boy walked out towards the back and David made the right decision, ended up in front passing the stands. He wins. It, turned, it was a... M- 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 Messy race, just to even watch, and it usually isn't the case with a bunch of Jenkinstown horses. It won't yeah. happen tomorrow. That won't. They, the lads won't let it happen. It'll be a good gallop every step of of the way, and I think he's the horse they'll have to beat. If I gave you a choice of the right, Andy Mack, who do you fancy in the Gold Cup? I have to go with him. He was very unlucky. Yeah. He, he slipped twice, which is a very unusual thing to happen. Um, but it was probably a case, as Katie says, that it was a very slowly run race, which means things all of a sudden then happen all of a sudden, and just Sean was, you know, going for gaps and things, and it didn't work out for him. And, he, you know, he, he did very well to finish third, and he's got no Ken Boy to face this okay. time either. Well, look, we are back tomorrow. As I said, we've had a fantastic day today. The bookies got absolutely cleaned out. We hope the same tomorrow. We'll be in the company of Mr. Robert Hall. Ted's gone off to look after his horse in the last race. We hope you can join us tomorrow, and we'll see you then.